Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Good morning. We are going to talk about uh, underwater wireless communication. Uh, my name is Khalid Sifiani, and here with me are uh, my two colleagues, Amr Sifiani and Ibrahim Khalida. Before we start this presentation, we need to talk ourselves why do we need underwater wireless communication in the first place. We need underwater uh, wireless communication for uh, oceanography studies, offshore oil exploration, study of underwater organisms, remotely operated vehicles, or we can call them drones, uh, water drones, underwater oil pipe inspection, underwater sensor networks, and in the future we might use them for underwater, de uh, underwater data center. Uh, this is a quick video two months ago of Project NARIC, which is a Microsoft Cloud data center in Scotland. Uh, it's a really uh, cool project, you should read more about it. Uh, you might uh, already know that we have uh, underwater wireless communication, but how is it done and what, is, what are its weaknesses? In the old underwater wireless communication systems, they use sound or acoustic waves to transfer data. They are only limited to 100 kHz because of attenuation with distance, and they have slow propagation, so it will have a large time delay. So can we use radio frequency communication, uh, which is RF communication? RF communication is limited due to conduct conductivity of seawater, and transmission for long distances is not feasible. This is a figure for acoustic attenuation in representative seawater and, uh, and RF attenuation in seawater. We can see that for acoustic waves at 100 kHz, the attenuation will be around almost 60 dB, dB per kilometer. And for RF, uh, for RF communication, the attenuation over here is per dB per meter, not per kilometer as in uh, acoustic waves. So what's the solution? The solution is to exploit the visible light band in electromagnetic waves in the range of 400 to 550 nanometer, which is roughly from blue to green. We use this range because of seawater's low absorption of visible light at that range, as shown in this figure. We can see clearly that blue is the low, uh, has the lowest absorption, and green has a bit higher than blue. And from uh, this figure, we can see that optical channel has a much higher bandwidth than acoustic channel, which will result in much higher data rates. So I'll leave the, uh, I'll leave the next slides for uh, my colleague Ibrahim Khalid. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Ibrahim Khalifa, and to continue our presentation, um, I'm going to talk about the optical communication system blocks that are usually used. So here we have a data stream coming in, and it's going to modulate the carrier, which is light in our case, and then the light source will emit the carrier into the channel. And then we have the receiver here. The light source could be an LED, which is usually used for short distances, or it could be a laser diode, which would give better performance and higher speeds. So just like in wireless electric communication, we have several challenges. And in the optical case, they are absorption, scattering, and turbulence. In this graph, we have on the y-axis the transmittance, which is the received over the transmitted optical power, plotted against distance for different wavelengths. So we see that as the distance increases, the received power decreases. And we can also see that the lower the wavelength, or the higher the frequency, the better performance that we're going to have with distance. This second graph shows how the attenuation varies with wavelength for different geographical regions. So the difference between these regions is the amount of particles that are in the water. So open ocean has the minimum amount, minimum amount of particles, meaning it's more clear, and therefore we have the least attenuation level. Whereas in the turbid harbor, we have the max amount between these three regions of 
particles and therefore it has a high attenuation level. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Amr Sufiani. Today I will talk about uh, the experimentation and future parts of uh, this uh, technology. Uh, as we can see, it is a new technology and we might uh, not see this technology being deployed in the next 10 years. But there are experiments being conducted by King Abdullah University of uh, Science and Technology. They managed to have uh, 2.3 gigabit per second over a transmission distance of uh, 7 meters and also 1.5 gigabit per second over a transmission distance of uh, 20 meters. And uh, this uh, figure shows uh, how the experiment is being, being done and the future of uh, this technology. Underwater wireless or optical communication is a new technology and it needs uh, time to be implemented. So here are uh, the, some possible future uses for uh, this amazing technology. First of all, uh, sensors uh, to predict uh, tsunamis before happening and uh, replacing submarine internet uh, cables and uh, discovering and scanning uh, ocean uh, floor and uh, lasting uh, offshore uh, military defenses. Uh, as you can see, this is a timeline for provision of uh, underwater wireless optical communication. And what do you think uh, will happen in uh, 2040? And uh, the last thing, any question of you, if you have? And uh, here are uh, our references. And thank you for listening.